I also do have George Lowe. Uh, can you give us your preliminary views on, I mean, you've heard Mr. Chikata talk as well as uh, Mr. Davis. <clears throat> well, um, clearly, um, let me say good evening to uh, our chair's viewers and uh, my senior Frank Davis I haven't seen in a while. Um, and of course, Mr. Chikata and uh, my good friend, uh, Mr. Nimedu, who I used to serve on the, on the Constitutional Legal Committee with uh, some time ago. You see, clearly, you will begin to see that whatever transpired in the Supreme Court means different things to different lawyers. And that is the theft, the legal theft. We always have disagreements and we see things from different perspectives. So clearly, I'm not surprised uh, that uh, our senior Frank Davis is, I mean, has taken this stand, Mr. Chikata has taken the other stand. Now, what is my stand? You see, my stand is that, number one, I disagree. With what? With the assertion that there is a constitutional crisis. I do not want to buy that at all. Because, you see, what is happening? For many people, would only see a legal issue. But it is not purely a legal issue. It's also an issue of procedures vis-a-vis -vis various institutions. But you remember, I'll let you continue. You remember at a point in her ruling, the Chief Justice said that procedures do not override the legality of the matter. You see, I am surprised that people are proceeding as though anybody is saying that the Supreme Court cannot do an interpretation of the Constitution. That right is theirs, and nobody is taking it away from them. But you would also agree that in so doing, there are procedures to follow, there are precedents to guide us. And I believe that it is the departure from those, these two that is, has landed us where we are today. You see, as a member of parliament, the framers of the constitution understood what they wanted. Clearly, when they made Mr. Speaker's rulings, final on the floor of parliament. You know that parliament in itself even has a review power. Where Mr. Speaker is ruling, somebody can go for a review from parliament. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily even have to go to the courts. That's number one. Number two, you see, when you look at the various provisions on, on the constitution, everybody is taking it from a different perspective. But I see that, you see, the framers of the constitution were clear in their minds as to who should declare seats vacant. That is why when there is a death or there is anything that takes away some, uh, that takes away somebody from parliament. parliament. It is said that it is the Mr. Speaker who declared that vacant and direct the uh, electoral commission to take the, the necessary proceedings to replace people in parliament. The constitution also envisages a point where there will be a time when even though such a uh, 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 vacancy has occurred, we cannot go for a by-election, and so nothing can be done. And it says three weeks, three months to an election. So I want us to look at all these things. I am saying that the Supreme Court has been called upon to give a, an interpretation. That interpretation, they say they will give on the 11th. But for me, some of the issues we are raising are also preliminary issues. They are not to the substance of what is before the Supreme Court. For instance, I have taken a view and I've, not, I've remained const, uh, 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 constant on that view. I believe that even as I speak to you now, the Supreme Court has nothing before it. Okay, tell us why. Because the, re, the, the writ that invoked their original jurisdiction or whatever jurisdiction is, it's a nullity because at the time Apenio Makin went to court, there was no issue. Ah, why? Haruna is standing on a political platform somewhere and threatens that when he comes to parliament, he will, uh, they, they, will, they, will, they will make Mr. Speaker declare seats vacant because they think that in their, in their view, the uh, people have crossed carpet. Is that not true? Mm. Mr. Speaker hasn't said anything when they came to parliament until the then minority leader had to force him put a formal motion before Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker says, I'll give my ruling in two days. It is only at that time that any action should have crystallized at all. So anything that was done before that action is a nullity.
But again, uh, when you listen to the ruling of the CJ, she said that, yes, I mean, when it comes to the, the, the authority of parliament to do what it has to do within the chambers, yes, it has it. But when it comes to interpretation of the, of the law, saying, and her argument was that, that in this case, it is the interpretation I of am Article saying, 97 please, GH. I am saying that the only reason why Afanyo Makin went to the Supreme Court for an interpretation was because he alleged in his own uh, uh, statement that he sent to the Supreme Court that this has happened and that Mr. M Mr. Speaker was likely. So we are saying that even at that time, Mr. Speaker had not indicated in any way that he was going to give a ruling on the matter. So, so far as I'm concerned, it's, I mean, there was nothing before the Supreme Court. Based on which I believe that anything that they have put on that, that writ is out of the window.